Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates as well as the best stocks to buy. So for more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. As you can see on screen, the NASDAQ, the SP500, and the Dow Jones, which are all respected indexes, have done pretty well recently, so this is great news for investors. But that's not all. We're also going to be going over a lot of news updates that you need to be aware of, starting off with none other than Google. Google's parent company has stock on the public stock market, and their ticker symbol is G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L. This company is not just in the news for owning some of the largest search engines in the entire world, which would be Google and YouTube, but actually it's because they built this facility that you can see here on screen. However, the funny part is that this facility actually has a terrible Wi-Fi, so it seems that the media got a big laugh off of this because Google is supposed to be a very technologically advanced company and they couldn't even get Wi-Fi right. One of the reasons why this facility was built is because Google wants to bring people back to work away from remote working. But because of the Wi-Fi issues, many people will still have to work remotely or the employees need to bring Ethernet cables or work outside. This is clearly just a funny story, so I don't anticipate that it will impact GOOG stock or GOOGL stock negatively. But next up, let's talk about how a Apollo Global Management reached out to Paramount Global about a possible takeover. If you didn't know, Paramount Global, ticker symbol P-A-R-A, -A, is an entertainment company while Apollo Global Management is actually a gigantic finance company. Essentially, Apollo Global Management provides capital to other companies which hopefully will run the future. So I find it very interesting that Apollo Global Management reached out to Paramount Global to potentially take them over. Also, if you're curious, I actually hold Apollo Global Management in my personal portfolio and their ticker symbol is APO, so feel free to look further into this company. Next up we have NVIDIA in the news, which is a gigantic GPU maker. And the reason why NVIDIA is in the news right now is because the three authors are suing NVIDIA. Essentially, these authors who produce various types of content are suing NVIDIA because NVIDIA's technology is used in the training of AI models, and these various AI models have actually used these authors' works. Now what I find interesting about this is this lawsuit for NVIDIA will not get far in my opinion, and here's why. NVIDIA themselves just gives the tool tools to other companies which create their own AI models and they train those AI models off of various types of media and content. So it seems that if these authors were to sue the actual company with the AI model, that would go much further legally than trying to sue NVIDIA, which only provides the capabilities or the tools for these other companies to have and train AI models. Therefore, I do not think this will negatively impact NVIDIA's overall share price, but I wanted to make you aware of this story nonetheless. Next up, let's talk about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, which is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. The reason why Palantir is in the news is because their CEO, who is Alex Karp, has put short sellers on blast. For context, a short seller is somebody who bets against the company's share price from going upwards. So short sellers are betting that the company's share price will actually go downwards and that's how they make profits. But recently, the CEO of Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, put these short sellers on blast by saying the following. He says that these short sellers are shorting a truly great American company. They just love pulling down great American companies. Palantir's CEO also had to say this about the general software industry by saying the following, and I quote, One of the most important things that happened in software was that large language models convinced people that you could get value out of AI. He goes on to say, But they also somehow convince people software is not a luxury product. It has to work. It has to move from something that you just paid for to something that improves your margins, improves your ability to organize your business, and makes your business more robust. In the end, I like to see the CEO double down on how much he loves his company that he runs, and I also like how patriotic this guy is in regards to America. If you didn't know, I'm already a huge fan of Palantir Technologies, and I've reported on them quite a bit, but I would highly recommend you do your own research on this company before you make any investment decision. Next up, let's talk about the electric vehicle company named Fisker, ticker symbol FSR, which recently plunged in their share price by around 40%. The reason behind why this company is falling in their share price so dramatically is because investors believe that this company is about to file for bankruptcy. Recently, Fisker has hired restructuring advisors to aid them in a possible bankruptcy filing. Now, this honestly shouldn't be a surprise, especially if you follow this channel, because this EV startup could run out of cash very soon because this has been in 
an ongoing concern, which we have mentioned a few times. Clearly, not all of these startup electric vehicle companies will be around for the long run, and the CEO of Tesla, who is Elon Musk himself, actually used this as an opportunity to comment on various EV makers. Elon Musk commented that Rivian Automotive, ticker symbol RIVN, could also go bankrupt over the next six quarters. On top of that, we also have the luxury electric vehicle maker named Lucid Motors, ticker symbol LCID, recently slashing their 2024 production guidance for the year. Obviously, the competition over in the EV space is extremely fierce, so I'm not surprised that Fisker could potentially go bankrupt, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about this story. Next up, let's talk about Dollar Tree closing 1,000 stores, which is really weighing their share price down. Dollar Tree, ticker symbol DLTR, is really feeling the macroeconomic uncertainty that we are experiencing right now in the general economy. This dollar store chain announced on Wednesday that they will close 600 family dollar stores, and then they will shut another 370 family dollar stores, along with another 30 Dollar Tree locations. In total, this would be 1,000 stores which are closing. The CEO even had to comment about this by saying, and I quote, We believe rationalizing these unprofitable locations will help to unlock meaningful value at the enterprise level, end quote. However, don't let that metric fool you, because this will boost their overall earnings by 30 cents per share, which is fantastic news. You should also be aware that another reason why this company's share price is falling is because their quarter four results did not meet Wall Street expectations. In my opinion, these store closures could actually act as a good thing further down the line, and here's what I mean. Currently, Dollar Tree has around 16,774 total stores, with 8,415 Dollar Tree locations, along with 8,359 Family Dollar locations. So closing around 1,000 stores is not going to be that bad, and on top of that, they are literally closing their worst locations. The crazy thing about this is that by this company closing their worst stores, this will actually benefit their future earnings reports. Therefore, it's not all bad news here. In the short term, clearly this is going to be very painful for their overall company, and for their share price, but after that, we could anticipate a very healthy rebound in this company's stock price. As of right now, the company has a price target of around $163 per share, which is above what it's trading at right now, considering the company is currently trading at around $128 per share. That means this company still has upside left in them over the next 12 months. Now, despite the macroeconomic uncertainty which is happening right now, the future of this company still looks pretty good, and that's why I personally hold them in my portfolio, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up, let's talk about a cybersecurity company named Sentinel-1, ticker symbol S. The reason why Sentinel-1 is in the news is because they recently reported their fourth quarter earnings results, which topped Wall Street estimates, which is great news for this company and their stock price. But despite this good news, the company's share price still fell because Sentinel-1 gave lackluster guidance, and this guidance was below investor and Wall Street expectations, and that's why analysts as well as investors were underwhelmed, and that's why they are selling their shares, thus pushing down their share price. However, I disagree with many investors about this, considering that Sentinel-1 actually posted a 13 cent loss last year for the same period, but recently they brought in an adjusted loss of just 2 cents per share. So to me, this is a very positive trajectory. On top of that, Sentinel-1 posted revenues of $174.2 million, equating to a 38% increase. For context, analysts thought the company was going to bring in $169.4 million, but they actually beat that estimate and they brought in $174.2 million. Likewise, analysts thought the company was going to bring in a loss of $0.04 cents per share, but they actually beat this estimate by bringing in a loss of only $0.02 cents per share. So again, this is good news. On top of that, Sentinel-1 said that their annualized reoccurring revenue from subscriptions increased by 39% up to $724.4 million, versus estimates of just $722.5 million. Again, this is great news regarding their future forecasts. But despite all of this good news, analysts and investors got bogged down and caught up in their future metrics over the short term, and that's why the company's share price fell by around 9%. So I would love to hear your thoughts about this cybersecurity firm down below in the comments, and tell me whether or not you personally hold this company in your portfolio. Next up, let's talk about Zim, ticker symbol ZIM, which is an integrated shipping stock, and their share price is falling hard right now, and here's why. Zim Integrated Shipping Services, ticker symbol ZIM, ticker name Zim, recently reported fourth quarter results that were slightly above expectations. But despite this, their share price is falling pretty dramatically by around 13.64%, and this is because there is no end in sight for macroeconomic headwinds. For some background, Zim owns and operates a fleet of cargo ships, and higher interest rates has led big shipping customers to cut back on cargo volumes, which negatively impacts Zim's top and bottom line. In their most recent report, Zim brought in a loss of $1 
$1.23 per share in their fourth quarter report on revenues of $1.21 billion. Now, the good news here is that this actually beat Wall Street estimates because Wall Street thought the company was going to bring in a loss of $1.29, but they only brought in a loss of $1.23, which is good news. However, they did miss on their revenues because Wall Street thought the company was going to bring in $1.28 billion, but they only brought in $1.21 billion. But like I've said in the past, if I had to choose between beating on revenues or beating on earnings per share, I'm going to pick earnings per share almost every single time, depending on the company. It seems that investors are losing hope in this company, considering that macroeconomic headwinds are weighing on their top and bottom line, which would be in regards to their earnings and revenue. So Zim is not predicting a quick turnaround. However, for long-term investors, this is a company that you probably would want to look into. The reason I say that is because many investors like this company for their very strong dividend. But I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding that, and I would encourage you to go do your own research to determine whether or not this company is a good addition to your portfolio. Next up, we have some AI stock news in regards to NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA, and super microcomputer, ticker symbol SMCI. As you know, NVIDIA is a gigantic AI company which produces GPUs, which are used for training AI models. And NVIDIA has an upcoming catalyst in regards to their GTC conference. However, we got even better news for this company because recently a Bank of America securities analyst reiterated his buy rating on NVIDIA stock and he gave them a price target of $1,100 per share, which is great news. On top of that, we do have their GTC conference to look forward to, to where NVIDIA could showcase their extensive product lineup across AI accelerators, Ethernet switches, data center hardware, PC gear, as well as software and services. Overall, this is a very positive news update for NVIDIA, and the news gets better and better because now we're going to talk about Super Micro Computer, ticker symbol SMCI. The reason why Super Micro is in the news is because another Bank of America securities analyst upgraded their share price target from $1,040 up to $1,280 per share while maintaining his buy rating. So this is phenomenal news. He also said this, and I quote, Super Micro is well positioned to benefit from a growing AI server market. The company is putting in capacity to support strong demand and revenue growth. And overall, this is fantastic news in my opinion. If you're watching this video, you probably own NVIDIA and Super Micro in your portfolio. So if you want more news updates like this, go ahead and comment that down below. Next up, we also see Kathy Wood, who is the CEO and founder of ARK Investment Management, also known as ARK Invest, by three companies. And the first one that she has bought is Pinterest, ticker symbol P-I-N-S, ticker name PINS. If you didn't know, Pinterest is a social media company, and their share price has literally doubled since bottoming out in the springtime of 2022. Currently, the company has been growing their top-of-the-line revenues and sales by around 12%, which is pretty good. And the company also has around 498 million active monthly users. And this means that the company has been growing their user base by around 11% over the past year, which is pretty impressive. As of right now, the company is forecasting a pretty impressive revenue acceleration, which could grow up to 15% in the current quarter. But we also see some analysts who believe that they will top that expectation by bringing in better than anticipated results. And this is why many investors and Kathy Wood of Ark Invest is buying up Pinterest stock. For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Pinterest and I do not hold them in my portfolio. But a company that I do hold in my portfolio is ticker symbol NU. New is actually the parent company of New Bank, which is a phenomenal fintech company, which has a fantastic stock. This company operates a digital bank over in Brazil that has exploded in popularity, and their revenues are following suit, considering that their revenues grew by 57% up to $2.4 billion in the last quarter. But the news gets even better, because New has been profitable for six straight quarters. And what's even better is that this company set a new record amount of net income in their latest report. On top of that, the company expects to hit 100 million accounts this year, and there is still further room for this company to grow. This company is growing very rapidly, and investors like myself have taken advantage of this, considering that their share price has literally tripled in price since the start of last year. As of right now, they are trading at just 17 times next year's projected earnings, so that means they're relatively cheap. Overall, I like this company, and I personally hold them in my portfolio, along with other companies like Ally Financial, also known as Ally, SoFi Technologies, and Mercado Libre. Now, last but not least, let's talk about C Limited, which is a Singapore based player in the e commerce, online gaming, and fintech space. And their share price has literally soared by around 43% in 2024. This company has been a great addition to my portfolio because over the last four years, the company has brought in triple digit revenue growth until the end of 2021. But the crazy thing is that this company is still growing because analysts forecast that this company will grow by around 15% over the next few quarters in their revenue. And to 
top it all off, C Limited's profit has nearly doubled in the year of 2024. So overall, these are great additions to your portfolio, but I would highly recommend you do your own research before you add any of these companies. If I personally had to rank these companies, I would rank New as number one, C Limited as number two, and then Pinterest as last. But I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below. With that being said, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.